Hey everybody, welcome back to Nifomism. That's Ryan, I'm Drew. We've done this often enough, haven't we? Yeah, if you can't differentiate our voices by now, then maybe you're a first-time listener and our dreams are coming true. Really? <laughs> They're bringing more? <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> so, over the weekend, Drew and I both watched a Marvel movie. In this movie, a long-lost evil relative returns to a secret advanced kingdom and usurps the throne. Our hero, along with a small band of resistance, must take the throne back. Did we watch Thor Ragnarok? Did we watch Black Panther? Does it matter at Do this point? Do you remember point? your regents tests? Because the answer is C, all of the above. Every time. Oh. But no, we saw Black Panther, which is, is it still the most critically acclaimed film of all time? The highest rated Rotten Tomatoes review of all time. Oh, it's, it's, a cultural touchstone. <laughs> a movie everybody should have to see and talk about for decades. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to remember this movie probably by April. Like, being honest. Because they're all the same now. I will remember it when it comes up for best costume design at next year's Oscars. Will it? There's going to be something that'll be better. Some... Marvel movies don't ever make it for best costume. And if they're going to give it to a Marvel movie, it'll be for Infinity War. Because how many characters are going to be? I'm not going to sit here and bash on the movie completely. Don't get me wrong. I've got my issues No, with I'm not it, here to bash on it. I thought it was good, but I just don't get what the hype, what the overhype I, is. Is it because it's February? It, it was February, and what else are we watching? Um, I think it's because people have two different standards of movies now. There's the Marvel standard, and then there's the actual good movie standard. I believe it, because I do. I judge Marvel movies in a vacuum. But if people only watch Marvel movies then this becomes a, a good movie by default. Yeah, I guess. I if, mean, if it's still the... nowhere near Civil War. Or not Civil War, near... Yeah, <laughs> Infinite, near... Um, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. And then Civil War is kind of like the coded Winter Soldier. But There's it's... not enough story in it, really. And, and the fight scene in Civil War was... There was no weight to it. You knew that all these characters were going to survive. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. it's it's a half an hour of spectacle that just that had no weight, no bearing. You well, could have comics, skipped it. Ryan. This is comics. This is really how comics go. But um, no, like spinning back to Black Panther. No, it was good. It was good, but as a Marvel movie is good in that it's you have to wipe. You need toilet paper. The toilet paper is there. That's good toilet paper. It's that. It's it's entertaining. It's, uh, it's not analogy. transcendent. Yeah. Well, no, it's. It had the setup to be something way better than what it was. You had all of these themes of colonialism, and I, I get it for people that study these. There sort of was things. enough good buildup to the class warfare or the cultural warfare aspect of it. Yeah. But then it just wet farted into oh, we've got only a half hour left. We need to have CGI battles. I'll get back to that in a second. Hold that thought. I mean, there's there's stuff in there between the, the colonialism stuff and the isolationism stuff, and even things like the Black Diaspora. There there are a lot of things this movie touched on, but like you said, at the end they had to they had, they had to play down to the lowest common denominator, which was getting in a CG fight scene. Yeah, and With rhinos. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 Marvel Marvel Ultimate Alliance super moves. Yeah, I felt like we were. It felt like I was playing Gauntlet Legends, because every once in every a while, every time you use that kinetic blast, it was just like, what's the point of having hand to hand combat when you could just literally get the shit kicked out of him and then just whomp? And the the CG was just sort of. It reminded me of in a pivotal scene. It looked the worst of any Marvel CG, including early Marvel stuff. The costumes being black. With one with gold, one with purple trim. Yeah, they, they it, had enough accents. No, it, then... it looked like Tron. Well, to a degree, to a degree, it wasn't. It wasn't as defined as the Tron. No, because, and that's what I because used. the Tron suits yeah. were were, mon, were 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 monochrome on color. In these, you had a little bit of like you had texture, so that it was. Yeah. Hey, look, we're putting a lot more into our CG budget, so you can see like tone and definition and all that. But that was wasted because Tron looked better. I'll always look better. Even the old one with the, where they're wearing Cooperell helmets. Ah, <laughs> uh, so I know we're cynical, you... but no, it, it was entertaining. But again, the caveat is as a Marvel movie. I'm not going to pretend to be some sort of expert on things like African culture. What I do know is that there's an entire belt through Africa 
that is known as the matrilineal belt or the band or something like that. Regardless, it's an entire an entire part of Africa that is that there's matrilineal succession. You would think if you're going back to these sort of roots that you would um, if you're trying to play up some of the cultural aspects that you might have touched on that, too. Or am I just am I going too far with this? Mm, to a degree, I mean, you, well, you get you get was it Angela Bassett to yeah. play the Queen Mother, and like she has a bigger role in like from granted I haven't read any of the Tanishi Coates newer Black Panther stuff that apparently is really good to the point where he's gonna write Captain America now for Marvel, but um there was like a a, a stretch in the comics where uh T'Challa was disgraced, his sister was the Black Panther and the Queen of Wakanda, and the Queen Mother their mother was a more powerful role because his sister's still younger than him. Okay. And not really. And I guess that goes with what you're saying, but I mean, it just, it's such a, my, big my, thing. D- just before I, I yeah. don't cut you off of before. Okay. Um, I like the idea of them using, using like Rodney King era, like modern peak civil rights issue. Like, like, yeah, like, like, like uh, like bad Oakland, bad, bad early nineties. Oakland is a good, Trying to trying to because you you couldn't just uh, have have them be this beacon of technology in Africa as Westerners didn't think of Africa as we plundered it and just left it because there's no real cultural touchstone for Americans to that. So how do you relate to these characters that if you're us, you're not gonna know you're not gonna be of black descent, you're gonna have a tangential knowledge of that culture, but we even understand like the strife of inner city living for black culture in the early nineties. So I think that was a good idea, but I think at a, at a, at a degree, they want to hold off on the fact that all of Africa is going to hate them for hiding all of this to another movie, which is to its detriment because everything is about the sequelizing of everything at this point. That's something that would have been more relevant than just having a fight scene where they've got an undercover agent. They save a band of what look like human slaves yeah, in early the first on. fight scene in the movie, yeah. and then that's it as far as don't say anything about what you saw. Like, I would think it would have been cooler if they would have had a little bit more of like neighboring countries having legends of the Black Panther because of this stuff happening. And, and they still may. You could yeah. easily write But I think that. that's stuff that not that's, necessarily rock on, it's just you haven't covered that. that on. Right. You were so focused on Eric Killmonger's story, which is so tied to him being an American Wakanda. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but damn. no, I, I think I think it's just there's there's it's an issue of world building in terms of what you see and how Wakanda works, and not necessarily how it how it interacts or chooses not to interact with certain cultures. That is a huge aspect of it is is how damaging its isolation is to those who have even a limited knowledge of how they operate, and those within who know that it's intrinsically wrong. I guess. Okay. Hide everything you have. Going back to what you were mentioning about the time period, too, can I just mention a little line that I loved in this movie? It was when they when they first opened the door, and the one guy says, "You got a couple of Grace Jones types out here." Yeah, I I didn't chuckle, but I knew what they're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, that is an app description that I bet nobody else in this theater. <laughs> Who hasn't seen the shitty Bond movies knows what he's talking about. Oh, no, I've seen Conan the Destroyer so many times that it was a, it it blindsided me. It was mystery science theater level brilliance in that line. Well, it's that, and it's that you, that line is clearly written by somebody who knows where that's, where that scene is supposed to be taking place and the type of people who are, who are saying it. Yeah. That's Absolutely. A, that's, that's a quip. That's a Marvel quip, but it's it's too smart to be a Marvel quip. <laughs> uh, no, there there was a lot of good stuff in, in this movie. I'm not going to sit here and bash it. I just I, it pisses me off that they left so much on the table. That there are so many themes that they start to explore, and that they just give it up for the sake of doing it. To me, it felt a, a like fight to, to be to use a stupid analogy. To me, it's like you put together a gourmet meal and then microwave it. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of good buildup early on. I mean, there is some like there's an overly long chase scene in it that you don't yeah. need it to pad out that much. Like you could have cut that shorter and then had more of I'm just going to spoil it. You, you could have more of Killmonger actually being in charge and it not being bad. You needed you needed some moral gray once he actually does take over and not just have it be I'm going to take over. We're going to literally topple 
the power structure of the outside world because of this technology we have. He needed to have it be like, yeah, a lot of people don't like what he's doing, but it actually is beneficial to our culture, even within our bounds. Speaking of moral gray, are, are, is Marvel afraid of treading anywhere near DC territory? Is that why they're avoiding anything that they feel might be too serious? Are you joking? Because I don't think DC does, it, does, does anything like that. I think the Winter Soldier is a more morally gray character than anything DC tries to present. I I didn't say DC does it well. It's just what I think what they want to do. DC it's wants the, to do grounded realism it's with the characters go- that are more fantastic than Marvel. Characters. It's the ghost of Christopher Nolan. It's the he has cast such a shadow on all of DC by what he did with his trilogy. I think DC feels that it has the the birthright now. I feel like the... I feel like with Marvel structuring what they're doing so much, I think they want to do that only in certain points in their in their phases. I think they want their their group movies to be where they actually start questioning the herodom of yeah. the heroicism of these characters. Well, this is the second movie where I was rooting for the villain that I could think of, Civil War. I mean, let's face it, they present Tony Stark as the bad guy, and I th- I thought he was right the whole time. If you've never read, if you've never read the original Civil War, I, but Tony, I have. No, no, if you, if, if you have, he starts out great, and then Mark Millar loses the plot and just makes him the bad guy, and that's pretty <laughs> much what Civil War the movie did, was from the get-go. He had a flimsy reason, at least in the movie. I mean, it makes sense from what they've done cinematically, but it, 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 it felt like... Okay, we gotta get them separated in an easy way, so we'll have this be a reason. But. By, by by grace of the title being Captain America, it's implied that he is the person in the right. Yeah. When I was rooting for Tony Stark, because yeah, something that powerful should be maybe not left to its own devices. Similarly, Killmonger wasn't exactly wrong. No, he, no, he went he, he went, went too mustache far. twirling full villain. I by the I feel like I audibly sighed in the theater. Yeah. Because it was just oh no, like you really had. Had a thing going here. And then, of course, they couch that in um, in Everett Ross basically saying, like, no, like, we in the West trained him to be a destabilizing force. So it's like, it's still all on Western culture for why yeah. he is who he is. And it really is on T'Chaka for fucking leaving him after killing his father. But in theory, if you wanted to start, it, if he took over... Instead of, like, usually going full mustache twirling villain, just start sending weapons to all four corners of the globe. If he would have, like I said, if they would have taken their time, and maybe once you you focus in on some specific conflict, and he decides to covertly send some um, well, they, vibranium they, they weapons. Well, they talk about how they have war dogs in every country. Yeah. If it was just a matter of, oh, he comes in charge, and then his first little... I gotta get them on my side because that's what a destabilizer would probably do is get enough people on your side so that when you do flip the script, they're gonna, enough people are gonna follow you. Maybe like the yeah. local African war dogs suddenly are able to distribute weapons, and then you've got a bunch of regime changes right around Wakanda, and then you've got people who feel, hey, maybe we weren't supposed to just hide in our bubble the entire time, but no, you just have, oh no, this guy's angry that like that like two generations of T'Challa's family failed to catch Claw. You bring Claw on a freaking tarp, and now I'm your friend. It's just a lot of yeah. a lot of quick edit in Marvel that just is like. And, and I that, get that you're you're trying to get to where you want to, which is giant stupid CGI battles. But you, we don't need those. Challenge your audiences. Yeah, I, I get it. Not everybody wants that, but if you want to, <sighs> the best fight in the movie. Granted, there is CGI because it is a fantastic looking setting. Is them fighting for fighting for the crown? On that in that pool, which is a ridiculous scene, and we'll talk about that too. Oh yeah, the way it looks is bad, but like like when he re- when he actually recognizes his claim to the title and fights, that's the best fight in the movie. You're you're right, except for the fact that you've got this hyper advanced society that it's has that could that could take over. Could yeah, they charge. could take over the world. Yeah. George Martin in Game of Thrones has spent thousands of pages. Talking about how stupid those sort of antiquated ideas are, and I, I'm not here to. Oh God, I I don't even want to get into some of this, but I, I know that some. If you let enough people listen to that statement, someone's going to accuse me of being culturally insensitive. 
just because. Well, no, no, no. I, I think I think what you're getting at is that you can incorporate elements of that culture, but still be realistic about how they would have evolved it to today. Whereas a lot, right. whereas this feels like the the uh, the cheap way out. Whereas oh, they would never change their core traditions. They would just dress more. They would dress more modern. They yes. use more modern technology. But they'd still like they'd still have these these tribal bounds, and it's like, and that's sort of what I was starting to get at a few minutes ago when yeah. I was starting to talk about the whole matrilineal succession. There's just some other really cool elements that you could bring in, that other than trial be, by combat. It still would to, be applicable to modern modern politics and modern sensibilities of yeah. Of that. I I am all for the when you're talking about something as important to say a coronation yes there should be traditions there should be some pomp and circumstance to it and gathering all of the other tribal leaders to bring a warrior and then say we accept your coronation we are not going to challenge yeah. well, I guess that, that's kind of what you get with that with his at his first crowning and except he like, doesn't oh crap like the tribe that we've already in in the opening crawl basically told you like is ostracized did show up this time so it kind of gives you the idea of oh, there's a wrinkle here because like this is exi- this is lasted centuries and then oh, you forgot that every once in a while somebody does have a claim that might actually exercise it. And you only get one wink that there is a cultural conflict there, and it's from the sister, who may be my favorite character. Oh yeah, yeah. because she is she's standing there full full garb and rolls her eyes at the whole thing. And people are talking down to her because she's being disrespectful. All this other stuff. But she's she's the only representation that we have in the whole movie that there's a, a fine line between adhering to tradition and honoring tradition. And that you can still it, you can still hold to certain traditions. Yeah. She, she's she's yeah. on the min-max. She's maxed towards the modernist. Yeah, thank yeah. you. As I stutter like an ass. Yeah. But... No, she she was great. She had a pun that I laughed out loud at. Um, I is it the corset joke? No, the the shoes. Oh yeah, the sneakers. <laughs> sneakers. Just... I, I it was it was something that I saw. It was it very it was very uh, it was very <laughs> classic you. Yes, it, yeah. it was something that I saw coming from a mile away. And laughed anyway because it's something that I would have said. Because it's a it was stupid great. Movie, yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. It's that kind of humor that I think Marvel needs a little bit more of, um, or to use, or to use, use more effectively. Like in this movie, this movie's not that funny, which I kind of like. But when it is funny, it is, it is, it, yeah. it, it is Marvel humor, but it's 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 not overdone. It's not Guardians, right? Yeah. Speaking of Q, given the current state of the comics with Iron Man. Do we see his sister taking over the mantle of Iron Man? Who Iron Man? Yeah, I mean, who's the who's no, the girl no. in the comics? The oh, the teenager. Riri, there's a black girl named Riri, Riri Williams who's unassociated. Right, but do you think that they may be able to combine those characters? They're, it's possible. It's possible because they they've set themselves up cinematically. They could go either way with Captain America to where Anthony Mackie could become Falcap, Falcon Captain America which is a thing going on in the comics, or they could go Bucky Cap, which is one of the better runs, personally, in the comics. Either of those ways, they've built themselves up to do, they might do both, honestly, because I think Evans is done. I think he's punching yeah. a ticket at the end of Infinity War. And I think sooner or later, you're going to have a successor Iron Man, or you're just going to retire that character for a while. I, how do you retire your first character from the MCU? You could basically do a nicer version of what happened to him in Civil War, where he just becomes the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he still may do that, yeah. but not having the Iron Man suit. Again, I, I just think that setting up the sister as this tech savvy and then bringing everybody together. During, yeah. I, I kind of hope that they do. I think she's a great actress and it would be it would be a neat way to keep that going. But I, I won't dwell on that. One. That's just riffing. I, and and yeah. this is funny because you and I crap on we, we crap on these movies lovingly because I personally like the Marvel Marvel Universe. I think it's I think it's a monumental achievement of a big studio to make something that is consistently entertaining and not of declining quality. It's it's it it rarely raises it. It's basically a bobber in the water. It rarely transcends, which I'm waiting for one of these movies to transcend, but I don't expect it to happen. Well, what a, when a parent sees their kids getting straight C's, and they know that they're capable of better. 
it's you want them to occasionally get an A on a test. Yeah. And I I sort of have that feeling of I know you can do better. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. It, they they have the writing capabilities of doing it. And we they, saw that in this one because they, everything they set up. With what they're doing with Star Wars, they have enough money to add people of quality to their stable. And I think that's what they're trying to do with Marvel is giving people who don't have... The Russo brothers directed, like, rom-coms before they did uh, Winter Soldier. And look what they put out. And now they've gotten the reins to the franchise because, thankfully, they got rid of Joss Whedon. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> we're, getting another... on, we're getting off topic about that. But, um... um no, it, it's... It's a good movie mar- with, with a Marvel trademark. Like, it's it's a good movie in that these movies are not bad ever because they're, they're, the people who are doing them know what know what the pet plan is, know what the quality they expect out of anybody working on these is. But it's not transcendent. It's, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. standard Marvel fare. It's just... We're only a year removed from Logan. Yeah. And I which, mean, is, Logan. which is experimental. <laughs> Yes, and that's what I want from the MCU. Just one movie, and this would have been the one to do it. And I think that's why I'm, I'm being so harsh on it, is they had every piece of the puzzle and just put it back in the box. Yeah. They don't break genre. They don't break genre at all. Like, like, like Logan is in the was in what was the now-deceased Fox universe, Fox X-Men universe, but it is, it's not a superhero movie. It's, it's a Western. It's a yeah. neo-Western Basically, and they could have done Black Panther as a political thriller. I, I think they, I think they went with, I think they went as close to doing that with punches as they wanted to with Winter Soldier, though. And that was their best movie. Yes. So I'm incredibly biased towards <laughs> Captain America, so I'm going to say almost all the Captain America movies are their best movies. I'm incredibly biased towards the Punisher, so I, I'm biased towards Netflix, but. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I want to play catch-up because apparently a new season of Jessica Jones is coming out. Yeah. For the record, the, the Punisher series itself was not great. Speaking of which, Ryan and I have been watching, or have watched, because I have no life, Altered Carbon, so expect an episode on that at some point in the future. Yeah, I'm getting to the point where I, I've gone from excited to growing disappointment. And... Yeah, and I've already told you that you get to a point, maybe at like the episode 7 or 8 mark, where you start looking at the... Time left an episode marker at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> but no, Black Panther, just to, to summarize it, it's it's if you want if you're gonna go see a Marvel movie, you're not gonna be disappointed. It's a good Marvel movie. It's probably one of the better introductory Marvel movies because you got his character origin in a different movie, so it gets to kind of just go into the story. Without it just doesn't the, stay yeah. on the best story, which is Eric Killmonger, the best villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the last villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who they Promptly, I mean, we're already. They kept Zemo alive. I'm glad for that. They kept Zemo alive because they need somebody to lead the Masters of Evil. But all you need is Thanos. (laughs) Just, just a a buff, a buff-looking older brother from the Goonies is the bad guy in Marvel's crowning achievement. I kind of want them to take a break after they finish this two-parter, and then I hope they decide. We want to fold in like the properties we now own, like Fantastic Four and X Men, and kind of just take some time off, like take two years off of making these movies. But you can't. and then come up with something new. Well, we already know they're not going to because no, the schedule's no, released. schedules through. Yeah, but they can't because you've got things like contracts with these characters. That's and true. Yeah, but the way they contract or I mean, these I think it's by appearance. It's not. It's not by year. It's it's you're contracted for sixteen appearances. We could cash that in when you're like fifty if they wanted to. <laughs> But no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm really feeling Marvel fatigue. This movie didn't exacerbate it, but it didn't abate it either. <laughs> yeah, it was like um, any of the old arcade racing games. Well, looks you like, get you get through the, the the marker halfway through, and it resets your timer to thirty yeah. seconds, and you just got to make it to the next one. Or it's like when you're watching like YouTube or Netflix and bet on your tablet, and you're like, I can't even make it through this whole video. Maybe something will happen in this video that'll keep me awake, and then you don't. Like it's it's there. It's it's I I still closed the tablet and went to bed. Like yeah, like it it didn't peak. It didn't peak enough of what people are sensationalizing it as peaking. That may be culturally. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's a culturally insensitive comment either. I think people are overblowing it. And, and that we uh, do we even want to spend a minute or two talking about that, or is it just? <laughs> Is it enough to say I think, that it's I'd like been... to think the tens of people, is there 10 people who listen to this? I'd be happy. 
Uh, <laughs> the tens of people who listen to this are smart enough to realize that, like, that's one of the things we don't really need to talk about is the the, the hyperbolic. And that's just applause it. towards this. I it was it was nice to see something a little bit different. Yeah, truly, it could have been more different though. That's what that's what. Hurts. Yeah, it could have been. It could have. It could have gone more towards like a Spike Lee type movie, and still kept its heart. But they yeah. did. They just were afraid because they wanted us whiteies to go. Well, the last I guess closing thought on that would be like the the ninety what ninety two Oscars where Denzel was playing Malcolm X and lost to fucking Pacino for <laughs> Scent of a Woman. Scent of a Woman's a good movie, but it's not. It, you, it was it was Denzel for Malcolm X, Pacino Scent of a Woman. And Eastwood and Unforgiven. I would have been happy with Eastwood getting it just because I love Unforgiven. It's one of my all-time favorites. But realistically, the Academy should have given that to Denzel, but it, it's Malcolm X. So they're, they're, it's not like they were yeah. going to go that far out on a limb in 1992. Yeah. But anyway, argue with us in the comments. That always give us some comments. Or on Facebook. And then prepare to go to church, I mean, to go see Infinity War now <laughs> on April 27th. And then you could go to church again and see Ant-Man and Wasp, which looks like the most formulaic film of all time. If going to church is Infinity Infinity War, is that where I'm yeah. now? Then being dragged by your grandparents to the fish fry in the church basement, that is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. So I'll go see both because I like the original characters. But... I, I'll go see it because I've got movie pass and live at the movie theater. So <laughs> And we're codependent at this point. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. See ya.